So how can you go from kind of a nasty part like this that can get all smudged and show every single defect that could possibly happen in a print to something like this that will print perfectly every time and looks way more premium? We're gonna talk about that in this video. So with any 3D print, the main things that cause quality issues are material and design. If a part is poorly designed, it won't look very good because it tries to do things that 3D printers just aren't meant to do. And if the material just isn't very good, it creates artifacting and different sorts of issues that can ruin the quality of the part as well. So let's go ahead and start with this most basic one. White is the worst color to make any part from always. The reason is, is because white shows everything. As soon as your customer gets the product, they are gonna put their grubby hands on it and leave a fingerprint somewhere on it. White, especially in a gloss, also has the problem of just showing every single defect of the print and anything from shrinkage to interior infill lines. But white also has the weird side effect of having a very gritty sort of a flow. So if you're doing really high precision parts, light colors are generally not very good because they flow so weirdly through the nozzle of a 3D printer because they use a colorant called titanium dioxide, they just don't create good prints. So great big glossy prints are just garbage because they're a great big old flat face that shows every single bad thing. And tiny little prints are terrible because it's gritty enough that the flow is just messed up. One way of dealing with this is to just move into a different material. You can move to darker colors and they can work all right, but again, within the glosses, you end up with all kinds of nasty features on this. And we implicitly induced a few things here by leaving the seam around on the back and that kind of stuff in order to show what a worst case can look like. This part is also just kind of awful because it is a large, broad, flat face. The darker colors get rid of the coloration issues like fingerprints and schmutzing and that kind of thing. But you still have all the issues with artifacts that show up really bad when you use these candy colors in a big old broad flat face. So the easiest way to deal with this is with a texture. Looking at this, you can see how that bubbly texture eliminates the view of any sort of thing that could ever go wrong with the 3D printer. It also makes the part look way more premium. Textures have this superpower that are totally free with 3D printing, but no one ever actually uses. People go with a big old flat face like this, and they never allow textures to be possible, even though they're easy to add into stuff. There are multiple different ways of adding textures. You can do it in CAD just by replicating the pattern over and over. You can use external tools like Formlabs Texture Engine to just upload a negative map and it will create a texture. And you can also use internal slicer settings when they're available in order to create like fuzzy skin to break up the surface. All of these are excellent options in order to take a terrible part to a really nice, beautiful looking part. But that is only one step of the way. You can take this nasty blue, this terrible print, and simply by changing nothing but the material end up with this. This is a matte black. Any matte color will generally improve this, which is why almost every single 3D print you have ever seen on the internet from an Instagrammer or influencer is almost always a matte color because they just look really good in general and especially on camera. So changing simply to a matte color is great, but the issue you have with matte colors is they are not as strong as the gloss colors. So gloss shows a lot more kind of bad features but matte looks really good, but is weak, and this one is strong. So you have to decide what your product is. Is it function forward? Is it design forward? Once you have the matte color, if you really like it and you want to still have a more premium look, you can again combine the color with a texture. And then rather than just having a default 3D printed part, you can have a part that looks nearly machined with beautiful contrast. And you can use this texture any way you want to. Right here, we're using basically machine knurling, which can be added to a print super easily. And it allows you to create a really premium feel part that doesn't look like a 3D printed part at all, and you also have great contrast. When you have things like text, you now have a part that is darker and more matte than just the standard stuff so that you get better contrast and better display. So hopefully that helps. It's really important to make sure that you're choosing the right material, but then also design your parts very intentionally in order to not just create something that looks like another cheap 3D printed part, but with no change in settings or anything else, just the change in material and the design itself, you create something that goes from chintzy to really, really premium. Have a great day, everybody.